Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So we're back. We're going to do another one. I actually don't look like a bum. I mean, I kind of do, but I kind of don't. So anyways, trying. So we are going to start into Kathy Crisall's other book, The Murder and Mayhem in Rockford. Um, the very first story is the murder of Sheriff Taylor. And instantly I'm old. So, well, I'm 40, but I grew up watching Andy Griffith, Griffith, Griff, Griffith, whatever, you know what I mean, and watch the, the Andy Griffith show, and he plays Sheriff Taylor on there, and that was what I instantly thought about. So anyways, not him. <laughs> this guy was actually living in Rockford a very long time ago, so there are a couple of key like spots that I noticed. I didn't read it. I skimmed through it. I was looking for where I can possibly shoot footage for. And there's like a couple of key points, but I was like, that's really not going to be enough for a whole video. So I'm finally going to bring out my Tinker Swiss cottage footage that me and Randy had shot months ago now. Um, they weren't, they didn't allow us to record, so it sucked. And then I just kind of left the pictures, so I've not used them yet. And I figured this would be a great opportunity to do that. So you guys get to see the inside of the Tinker Swiss Cottage during this video. Um, only because there's not a lot of, like, spots. And it's starting to get nicer out, so I don't have to do drive-bys no more. <laughs> so anyways, um, let's get into it. Rockford was a pretty wild place in 1856. The city was making advances in what would become the foundation for the manufacturing boom that was to put Rockford on the map. But in the early days, crime was very common. Robbery and cattle rustling were especially prevalent. So I didn't know what cattling rust, cattle rustling was. I googled it. It's pretty much just they're stealing cattle. Nothing glamorous. I was like, what is that? It's nothing glamorous, guys. John F. Taylor was a sheriff in those days. He was, from all accounts, a very fair man. Sheriff Taylor was nearing the end of his term, and Samuel Church had already been chosen as his replacement. Taylor expected the rest of his term to be quiet. Unfortunately, he was wrong. When he left for work on November 11, 1856, he kissed his wife and one and a half year old son goodbye. As usual, neither could know it would be for the last time. Sheriff Taylor was alerted to possible cattle thieves in the town when two brothers, Alfred and John Countryman, rode into town with a deal that seemed too good to be true. They were trying to sell a herd of cattle for a sum much lower than market value. The prospective buyers grew suspicious and alerted the sheriff. At around nine o'clock that morning, Sheriff Taylor arrested the brothers for the suspicion of theft. He carried through the usual routine of searching the suspects and found pistol balls in Alfred's pockets. But when he questioned the suspect, Alfred denied having a gun. The sheriff and one of the deputies started to walk toward the jail. Just as they reached the steps, Alfred broke away from the sheriff, leaped over a fence on Elm Street, and ran down the street toward Main Street with Sheriff Taylor in pursuit. The sheriff had almost caught up with countrymen at the livery stable of Hall and Reynolds and was about to grab him when Alfred pulled a gun and fired at the sheriff. Taylor, hit in the chest, staggered a few steps and gasped out, I'm shot, catch him. He then fell, mortally wounded. Alfred countrymen continued to run and made it all the way to Kent Creek before he was brought down by one of the many citizens who took up the chase when Taylor fell. Witnesses would claim the pursuers numbered over 100 men. There were some on horseback and some on foot, some armed with shotguns and some with rifles. Alfred was caught and put into a police wagon. When they arrived back at the jail, a very large crowd had gathered. They brought a rope with them and threatened to lynch Alfred right there. City officials rushed to the jail, and Sheriff-elect Samuel Church arrived. 
He was able to calm the crowd with premises that justice would swiftly prevail. The autopsy would show that the pistol ball entered the sheriff's chest and passed through his lung, hitting the aorta. Four quarts of blood had pumped into his chest. Sheriff Taylor, who was 31 when he died, was respected in Rockford, and his funeral definitely reflected that. It was held on the public square under the charge of the Masonic fraternity of which Taylor was a member. The story of his murder went national. Alfred Countryman's trial was held in February 1857. The jury found him guilty of murder and he was sentenced to hang. His execution took place on March 27, 1857 at the farm of the new Sheriff Samuel Church, about two miles outside of the city. People crowded into Rockford from all over the country. Two special trains brought riders from Iowa and intermediate places to witness this execution. Countryman was the first man to be publicly executed officially in Winnebago County. It was later estimated that 8,000 people came to witness the event. Ironically, extra precautions were taken to make sure that Countryman arrived safely to the execution. After Countryman said goodbye to his wife and mother, he began his trip to the place of execution. There was a procession from the jail, including two fire companies armed with sabers and rifles, to surround the carriage in which Countryman rode. The procession was described in great detail in the newspaper, with the crowd lined up the whole way from the jail to the execution location. Alfred Countryman rode in the carriage with Sheriff Church. The windows were covered with curtains to deny the crowd a view of him, not wanting to gratify their morbid curiosity. Countryman's father, brother, a cousin, and sister were there to witness the hanging. Alfred addressed the crowd to beg their forgiveness. His last words were, Farewell, friends. Once more I hope to meet you in a heavenly land where sorrows be no more. Glory be to God. I am going home. Countryman's arms were tied to his side, a black bag placed over his head. The noose placed around his neck, and at 17 past 2, the drop fell and Alfred Countryman was no more. As his body fell through the trap, witnesses remarked that even though the crowd was huge, the only sound that could be heard was the sobbing of the Countryman's family. Sheriff Church addressed the crowd before the body was taken down. These painful proceedings being now concluded and the sword of justice about to be returned to its sheath, I hope never again to be drawn with so much severity I would thank you all for the good order you have maintained. Your conduct does credit to the city, and I hope you will observe the same decorum in retiring. Many might wonder why so many people came, some from far away, to witness this event. The newspapers from that day speculated. Curiosity was no doubt, the prime motive which induced their attendance. And those that contend that examples of this kind have effect to deter men from incurring a similar penalty would be sadly puzzled to determine the effect of the conflicting emotions which stirred the breasts of that vast crowd of specters who had congregated for the single purpose of seeing a fellow creature die. Alfred Countryman's body was turned over to his family and taken home to Ogle County to the Pennsylvania settlement and buried there. Unfortunately, Sheriff Church's wish didn't come true, and the need for the sword of justice would arise several more times in the Forest City. And that is the end of that story, guys. I'm going to add to that. You know, if that was the kind of punishment that people had to expect for, like, murder, um, maybe there wouldn't be so many murders. Because Rockford, like, there's so many murders. And they, like, sweep all this shit under the rug. Like, I swear to God. And I still think that there's a freaking silly serial killer here right because they keep pulling bodies out of the fucking rock river why are they what <laughs> what i can't imagine this and they're like oh no there's not a serial killer then why do you pull out like 10 20 bodies out of the rock river every year get out of here 
and like what's the correlation between it oh a drunk person fell off the bridge you guys have seen the bridges around here right i've fucking recorded the bridges on purpose so you can see that they have precautions up that people can't just jump off the damn bridge there's like fence and shit and they're high right so anyways uh yeah sure unless they're going off the bank into the fucking river i don't know but i can't imagine that's what it is i i still think they're playing us and they're just not telling us that the, they're just not telling us the truth right and that's all i'm about is the truth just tell me the fucking truth if there's a serial killer out here i'm not gonna let my daughter go outside and play you know it's it's bad enough that there's a drive-by almost every day and i have to tell her to stay in the backyard all the time because i'm afraid there's going to be a drive-by kid there's been several kids that have been shot in in the crossfire of freaking drive-by so it gets ridiculous i don't know if you guys have this problem where you live at but this is ridiculous but we have a new sheriff in town and this is a bad bitch woman okay and I call her a bad bitch because I've heard her speak and she is not playing with these people. She is coming for them. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the fuck she's going to do because she's new, right? And the other guy, he was incompetent, obviously, and he's let this town go to shit. But I have confidence, man. Bad bitch. I heard her. But anyways, so on that note, we're 12 minutes in. I'm sure I can cut out, cut it down some, but I don't know how much. So anyways, I'm going to go to them key points that I did not write down. I put down a pen and paper so I could write down them points and then I didn't. I'm going to go back. Oh, so much more work for myself. Anyways, if you guys liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And as always, I appreciate you guys so much for watching my videos. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.